All right, welcome to a road cut here in Western Wyoming. Not a random road cut though. Um, I think I'll do this in a couple of parts because I think it's interesting to see it from the air. So part of this will be um, done back in the office on the computer. Um, pretty basic outcrop here, but I think the overall structure is something I want to highlight and convey. So thanks for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey. Late in the day, a couple hours of light left here in Western Wyoming. And so I kind of sprinted out this way in the truck to try to get this last little uh, video done before uh, it got a little bit too dark. So we're on, uh, I don't even know what highway we're on. I think it's 287, just Southeast of Lander. I'll make sure I get that correct. And there's some really nice country here. You can see some of the reddish uh, bluffs in the distance and those same units are the rocks we see in front of us here so as you probably have surmised sedimentary uh, you can see them nicely bedded and tilted to the left now I'm looking north so to the left would be to the west and that's important to keep that straight because that's going to play into our story here a little bit so let's take a quick look at these rocks and then let's actually measure their um, orientation, how much they're tilted or dipping in three-dimensional space. And then we're gonna whiz up the road a mile or so to another outcrop and we're gonna compare and contrast a little bit. So, um, okay, so these are some, these are a little bit gritty. These are some fine sandstones, these red rocks here. And then it looks like there's some interbedded material here that's more uh, soft to the touch, mud-sized particles. So these would be some shales. And so you can see more or less layers of alternating sands, which are the thicker uh, units, and then some thin layers of shale interbedded with those sands. Um, see if there's anything else here that's of super cool interest. Again, my first time here as well. And we don't know the age of these rocks, but here's a big tip. And this tip works mainly in the Western US. It's not always true, um, but it's generally true. Um, rocks that are this color red, kind of a brick red color, are often Triassic in age. Um, so if you go around the Colorado Plateau, Southern Utah, Northern Arizona, um, those sorts of places, and even here in Western Wyoming, um, you'll find that the Triassic rocks are more often than not this sort of brick red color. So, so we have some likely Triassic um, units here. Uh, probably, I'm learning the the Wyoming geology as I go. Probably the Chugwater Formation, which is, I think, uh, correlative to the Chinle Formation in Arizona and Southern Utah. I'll have to check on that. Um, but what we really want to do here, again, we're looking more or less due north here, and we can see the pronounced layering dipping to the left, which is to the west. Um, let's use our handy dandy Brunton compass real quick here and get a measurement on the angle in which they're dipping. I think that will be fun. Uh, we can get the direction as well. So maybe you could take a, a guess as you're sitting there with how, what angle with respect to horizontal, uh, these rocks are dipping. And maybe you think, you think 20 degrees, you think 30, 40, 50 degrees. Um, who knows, right? Well, let's go ahead and use our compass. I'll do another video sometime where I show you how, how this little compass is used. There's a little bubble in there. I don't know if you can see a little bubble I'm trying to level. And then once that's level, pull it off. And it looks like these are dipping at about, about 29 degrees or so to the, um, to the west. Okay, so that's the part one of this video. Quick little outcrop, a uh, quick little description, and a um, quick orientation on these rocks. We're gonna drive now on the highway. Now we're looking east. We're gonna drive a mile or so up the highway 
and see if we can see these exact same rocks down the way and see what their attitude is. So join me just a mile or so east on the road for part two. Okay, here we are about a mile east on the highway, uh, looking at another little road cut here. And what do you see? Notice the rocks now, we're still looking north here. So we've been looking north at both road cuts. Both road cuts are to the north of the highway. And so now we have the rocks tilted down to the right, which is to the east. So with rocks at the first location dipping to the left, and rocks on this side dipping to the right. What we have here, and you'll only really get to see it well probably from an aerial view, that's why I'll add the part at the end, is we have an arch. We have rocks folded into a rainbow, if you will, and that's a type of fold called an anticline, uh, where the rocks are oldest in the center. Let's go up here and look at the rocks though, just to make sure, but from what I can tell, they look very similar to what we saw previously. Um, the color's definitely right on. And then if we come up here, we can see we've got layers of shale, right? So mud-sized particles that breaks into little flat layers here. And then these more massive beds here are sandstones. So we have these alternating muds and sandstones, um, same color, likely Triassic in age. But in this instance, they're dipping uh, to the right or to the east. And there's another fun wrinkle to this. So not only do we have an anticline, but we also have a, a little twist to it that I'll share once I get, get you on the computer in part three here when we're looking at this uh, on Google Earth. So, but I really thought this was kind of cool. It's a nice, um, smallish structure meaning like you can uh, pretty easily see the two sides or limbs of the fold on either side what's going on up here and then it looks like we may have along the base of these red rocks um an unconformity with some erosion you can see there's big chunks of rock that have been big clasts and so this is likely an erosional surface, what we call an unconformity between these rocks, which are a little different color and different characteristic, and then our red rocks that we've been focusing on during this, um, during this video. You can also see at the base of these red rocks, there's different color, lots of oxidation. I turn the camera upwards. And then most telling are these big eroded out Plasts or particles, which indicates erosion. In order for those rocks to be um, broken up like that, we need a period of erosion that weathers them, loosens them, and then we start to deposit that sandstone on top. And so there was a break in deposition between this brown unit here and our red, um, likely Triassic rocks sitting just above. So extra bonus here at stop two of having uh, an unconformity, what we would call in this case because the rocks are parallel, we call this a disconformity because the rocks here are bedded at the same angle as the ones above. And then for a final little capper here, let's um, remember the first one we measured, whoops, the orientation of the dip of the rocks in the red Triassic units. We got um, 29 degrees, something like that. Uh, let's see what we get here. We also have, in these Triassic shales, there we go, there's good lighting, ripple marks. So you can see the little up and down crinkles in the rock there. Looks like a Ruffles potato chip. Um, when we look at these end on, about like that, looks to me like they're fairly symmetrical. So when we have symmetry in our ripple marks, that indicates that the water, if the water was the depositional agent, was moving back and forth, sloshing back and forth. And that would be the case usually 
uh, along a coastline you know the waves kind of lapping up and down the waves come in the waves go out could be in a, like a tidal flat where the tide comes in the tide goes out and these would be different shapes if they were from a uh, sand dune where the wind blows in one direction or from a riverbed where the river flows dominantly in one direction so extra little bonus here at this outcrop we get some nice these are called sedimentary structures they tell us a little bit about uh, the history of the rock and we had that nice unconformity there so definite bonus but let's go ahead and measure the uh, dip of these beds here this surface looks pretty good here i can see that it uh, proceeds over into that back of the outcrop there so we'll get our front and compass out take my glasses off so we can see better lay it on the surface of the rock with the little arrow with a black uh, arm pointing down in the dip direction and we'll get the little bubble to level and here we get a dip of about uh looks like it's about 32 33 degrees so pretty similar right 29 degrees at one end of our anticline and 32 30 degrees at the opposite end um nice so these structures were formed this fold is here um from the laramide orogeny most of your uplifts in most of wyoming except for the far western edge of wyoming are due to um there's some more ripple marks here in this piece uh, but they're due to compression from about oh boy like about 70 60 million years ago this was the same mountain building event that brought up the loud truck brought up the rocky mountains as well and so this fold that we've witnessed and visited at two different places here along the highway um, is a remnant or a relic of the laramide orogeny this anticline so i'll go ahead and sign off from the field part two here and then i'll take you into the office and google earth where we'll look at this structure in a little bit more detail from above Hope you enjoyed uh, this sort of three-part little video segment on uh, this anticline here, just right along the highway in Western Wyoming. Hope you enjoyed also the, the office Google Earth component to kind of see what it looked like structurally from the air. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me. Appreciate everything. Uh, if you'd like to donate to the cause, there is PayPal links under the video description. You can click the little thanks button there at the bottom right of the viewer or, uh, what else? Or there's the banner of the homepage. That's another way as well. So thanks so much.